Let's introduce the concept of input and output. How is it that programs are able to read input from various sources like the terminal or a file and output data back to a terminal or to a file and save it onto our disk? Well, when we interact with our system, we've been using a terminal this semester. Right? And a terminal, as far as we know, is a program that allows us to connect to our system and send and receive data to and from it. Right? The terminal is hooked up to our operating system. Right? So our operating system is going to be keeping track of our IO uh, table. I'm gonna call this the IO table for now and I'll come back and refine this later. So our IO table keeps track of where are the various places that we might be sending or reading data to or from in our programs. Right? So the IO table is gonna have some entries in it. And the operating system keeps track of this uh, in a global sense. Like, so every program uh, or every file that's being read, any, every pro person that's connected to a system via a terminal uh, is gonna have an entry in this IO table. And I'm going to make an entry here that says uh, we have a terminal that is connected to our system and uh, it has read-write capabilities, right? So there are some attributes about the uh, things that are connected to our IO table. And I might just draw uh, some arrows here to connect these two together, right? Technically, uh, this ID would be a number, but for the purposes of uh, this, maybe I'll even call this uh, T0. This is terminal zero. So you can imagine there are multiple terminals connected. Ultimately, the IO table is gonna use just numbers for these IDs, but for the purposes of illustration, I'm gonna to choose to use a symbolic T to represent uh, some terminal connected to our system. And this will be the entry in the, uh, the operating system. I should make a note of that, the operating system IO table. All right, so how is it then that when we run a program we are able to send and receive input from and to a terminal. Well, each process that we run, so let's imagine we run a process like cat. And cat, remember, has the ability to read and write files, but we're gonna run cat in a special way. And the special way that we're gonna run cat is with a, a, an argument of a dash. And what this dash is going to mean is, hey, there is no file for you to read, read your input from uh, the standard input. And we'll talk about what standard input is in just a second, right? So if we wanted to demo this really quickly, let me try switching over to a demo. And you can follow along with this demo in your terminal if you'd like. So if I give the command cat and then a dash, notice we're now waiting on input. So the system is blocking, waiting on us to give some input. So I could say something like hello, and remember what the cat program does is it reads lines of input from some source. And in this case, it's from our terminal. And as soon as it gets a line of input, it prints it back out to the screen, right? So when we are reading from standard input in the way that we are, uh, as soon as cat is able to complete a full line of read, it is going to write that back out to standard output, right? and that's what's causing it to get to our terminal. But we still don't really know, based on this drawing, how is it that data is getting from one place to the other, right? So in, in what are these terms, standard input and standard output that I'm talking about? So each process is also going to have an IO table associated with it. And I'm gonna call this uh, uh, a file descriptor table, FD table, right? And each process is going to have a table that has its mappings of some numbered ID. In this case, we'll use zero for standard in. And I will write in uh, here, standard input. Uh, this is a name convention, but the idea is this has the ID of zero, so standard input. And it's going to say zero, our standard input filed uh, entry in our process is going to be connected to T zero or to our terminal, right? And so standard input will be connected to T zero and it's going to be reading from 
the terminal, right? So it's going to be waiting for reads, and this will be where we read from. Uh, the next file entry is standard output. And standard output will be where our program, where the cat program can write from, right? It will also be connected to terminal zero. So our writes will be going to the operating systems terminal zero. And so the idea here is when we started cat with just this dash, what we're saying is, hey, read as your input stream, where you're going to get your data from, uh, read from standard input or file descriptor zero, right? And so that is what caused uh, the cat program to say, okay, well, standard input is going to be connected to our terminal, right? And we'll look at ways that we can uh, think about that a little bit differently in just a moment. There's one other file descriptor here that is standard called standard error. And standard error has a file descriptor too. And by default, it is also connected to uh, your terminal by uh, and, and writes to it. And the we'll look at this in a little bit more depth shortly, but the, the difference between these two things is why do you need uh, one output stream for output and one output stream for errors? Well, we'll come back to this, but the idea is we actually, if, if we wanna be able to do different things with these outputs, like sure, the default mode is we want these streams to write to our terminals, but maybe in the future, we'd like to be able to send those output streams to a file. Maybe we want the output of a program to go to a file, uh, but the errors to still go to our terminal. And so by separating these two streams out, if we emit error messages on standard error, uh, unless we do something very special, those, those messages by default will always show up on our terminal, even if we're doing something different with our output. Okay, and we'll come back to this with a little bit more depth. All right, so this is running cat in this special way that we've never run cat before. What happens when we run cat in the way that we normally would, right? So if we think about that as, uh, and so if I wanna end my input here, I can give the control D end of input signal, and that gave the end of file uh, that was read back from standard input, and then that caused cat to, uh, to exit, right? So in my directory, and I'm working in a lecture directory today, uh, let me hide this real quick. So I'm working in uh, this file demo directory. And if I list the files here, we have this input file. If I were to open this file in Vim, we would see that it has eight lines in it, the quick background function. <laughs> it has eight lines in it, the quick brown fox jumped over the fence, all right? So what happens when we run cat with our input file? Well, what the cat program is doing is it's looking at its arguments and at some point it's saying, hey, uh, you gave me a file name here. You didn't give me the dash, so I'm not gonna read from standard input. Uh, you gave me the file name. So what it's going to do is open up a, another file entry. So it's going to uh, call a function named open and it's going to open input.txt. For reading. So what is that system call going to do? And, and this is a system call because we're asking the operating system, we need the operating system to do something, right? Uh, the operating system has access to our file system and our disk, which I'm going to represent here. So this is our disk or our hard drive. And when we call open, uh, which we'll do in code uh, later in this lesson, we are saying, okay, hey, operating system, uh, do you already have any uh, in your IO table uh, an entry for this particular path that we could read from? And maybe it would, and we would connect up to that. But in this case, we, we haven't yet worked with this file. So uh, we are going to open up a, uh, an entry, which I will use the F uh, letter for, and F0, and this will be for reading, say, only. Uh, and it will be connected to a disk uh, or the, the file system. It wouldn't, there's, there's other systems beneath this that you would need to learn about uh, in terms of the file system. But we're gonna wave our hands here and say that we are just gonna pull this, this make this connection to our disk. 
uh, and this specific file that's stored on our hard drive, okay? And uh, now we need, the, the, this open uh, is also going to set up a new entry in our process file descriptor table. And it's gonna have, say, the ID3, we'll just keep counting. Uh, and I'm not gonna write anything in its entry here, but actually maybe I'll just, just so we know what we're talking about, input.txt, this was, uh, this actually wouldn't be here. I'm just, these are just labels. We're, we're putting names on these entries uh, and it's gonna be connected to F0 for reading, right? And what this open call is going to return to us is a handle, uh, it would return the value three, right? And that's going to give us a handle on this particular entry in our processes uh, file descriptor table. And so now when we go and we read and where cat is going to read from uh, file descriptor three into some uh, array of cares, right? So it's gonna read some data into some buffer. Uh, it's gonna say, hey, I wanna read from my file descriptor three. Well, that's gonna be mapped to some operating system file descriptor, right? Remember this, these would be numbers. This might be a giant number like 1024, uh, something, it's not gonna be F0, but for our purposes, we're saying this is the, the file that we've opened uh, and we're able to read from disk, right? And that would, send, that would fill, uh, the operating system would then fill the uh, buffer that we give it with data from that particular file, right? And then it would output, it would say, hey, take that and output it to standard output, right? And that's what caused these lines to show up on our screen. Now, why are we going to all this trouble? Well, uh, it turns out we can open up files for writing too, and we'll look at that. Um, but what I wanna do really quickly is actually show uh, some ideas that we can carry out at the terminal using and thinking only in terms of our standard input and output, right? So there's an idea called input and output redirection. And this is a really clever, beautiful idea uh, that we have available to us in a textual command line interface like in bash, right? And in the, the Unix or a, a Unix based operating system. And so the idea is what if we wanted to redirect these uh, standard streams from where they normally would go, which is the terminal by default as we're, as we're setting these processes up and we run this program to say a file. And let's start with output redirection, right? And uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hide my uh, drawing here for just a moment. And back in the terminal, we're gonna use that cat command with the dash, right? And this next symbol means output redirection. And we're saying uh, redirect my output to a file named output.txt, okay? And notice I can now input some text here. So I could say, uh, hello, world and then press control D. And if I do this and I look at what are the files in my directory now, notice that we have this file named output.txt. And if I were to look in that file, we have the two lines of output that we would have normally gotten if we had uh, run this program without redirecting it. So, right, so if, if I ran this again without redirecting my output and said hello, Notice hello is printed again immediately and world, world is printed again immediately, control D to end my input. When I did that with uh, this example, only the text that I typed as input showed up here uh, on my terminal screen. The output was redirected to this file named output.txt. Right? So I'm gonna give one more example here, cat dash and uh, output.txt. And let's say uh, another example is uh, the two lines I'm going to enter, control D to end. And now if I looked in output.txt, sure enough, those are the two files that are saved, or those are the two lines saved in that file. So what's going on here with output redirection? When we give this syntax in uh, a command, what's saying is, this is saying, hey, redirect my output to a file, right? So if we go back and we think, okay, uh, this time around, when, we, uh, when the bash program goes to interpret our command, 
it's going to need to open up this file for writing. So we're gonna have uh, a file entry F say zero again, uh, but this time around it's going to be for writing purposes. And that's gonna be connected to, uh, maybe I'll write in output.txt. All right. And the really cool thing that happens here is when you begin a command like this, the shell is setting up standard output to not be connected to your terminal uh, entry in your operating systems IO table anymore for writing. No, what it's gonna do is connect you to this file, right? And so it's saying, okay, we're actually, uh, standard output for this cat process is going to be redirected to this particular file so that when I write to uh, file descriptor one in cat, uh, its output is sent to this file and that's saved to a disk. Okay. Now another example of this is, and so notice that this arrow is saying, uh, or this, this greater than symbol uh, kind of gives you a hint that we are uh, sending data in the direction of output.txt, right? We're, we're, we're redirecting to some file here, all right? Now, uh, what if we were to begin this command in another way? Uh, if we were to say cat and uh, read from standard input, but this time around, we are going to read output, well, let's do input.txt. And notice that even though we said, hey, read from standard input, normally we would be able to type there. We're using something called input redirection in this example. Notice we're using a different symbol here, the less than symbol. And we're reading input from this particular file path, which had these contents in it, okay? So what happens when we run it in this way? Well, in this example, we didn't redirect our output, right? So our, our, our standard output for this cat process was still uh, going to our terminal, right? So whenever cat wrote any data, it was writing it to our terminal. But what we did change was standard input, right? And so with standard input, uh, I'm actually gonna set up another file entry here. Let's imagine uh, the operating system kept that around. So let's say we had a file one that was uh, read from input.txt. Right, and so that would read from the disk when we access file uh, with, with ID one. And so what we're saying here in this input redirection is, okay, when we start this cat program, cat program is gonna have its standard input connected to file uh, index one, right? So it's not gonna be reading from our terminal waiting for us to type something in. It, no, it's gonna set up this connection to a file entry that can read from a, a, a file on our disk. Right? And so this is input redirection that allows us to read files into uh, standard input, right? And that's pretty cool because now notice uh, we could, we could uh, redirect rather than us typing this information into standard input, we can take that information from a, a file on the desk. So now you might be wondering, well, can we combine these ideas? Can we compose these ideas? Can we do both input redirection and output redirection? Right, so I'm gonna reset this drawing to our, our default. And our default is uh, we read from uh, the terminal, from standard input. Uh, when we access standard input, we're reading from the terminal. And when we write either to standard output or error, we're writing back to the terminal, right? So this is our default. Let's look at one more example of trying to redirect both and then try and illustrate how that comes together in terms of our file descriptors. All right, so I'm gonna change examples here. And we're going to cat again uh, from standard input is where cat is gonna read its input from. So we're gonna cat input.txt and our, we're going to redirect our output to output.txt. And these file names are arbitrary. You could use any file path you wanted. And notice we didn't wait for any entry and we also didn't see any output, right? But if I were to open now output.txt in Vim, we see that we have effectively copied the input.txt file to output.txt. So how did that come together? Well, what happened was 
let's think about this input redirection first. And maybe I'll use blue here to uh, indicate this. Oops. Uh, all right, so we'll use blue to say what happens when we did this input redirection. So the shell, as it was setting up this process uh, in, in beginning the pro before it began the cat program, it set up uh, its file descriptor table such that it's going to read not from terminal, but it's gonna read from input.txt, which we have an entry in our operating system table down here, F1, right? So uh, cat thinks that it's standard input is connected to F1, right? And that's where it's gonna read from. Now, if we think about, well, what about the output redirection? So the output redirection is gonna change the standard output connection of this process. And rather than writing to uh, terminal, we're going to write to file zero, right? So because file zero ha was open, uh, had an open entry on our operating systems IO table, uh, for that particular file. So when we write, uh, what's happening is when the cat program writes some data out, it is sending that data to output.txt. And notice how cool it is that we're able to rewire these things from the outside of a program, right? We're making these changes uh, in our file descriptor table uh, based on the commands that we're giving at the bash shell prompt. So when bash sets up the process cat, it sets up this table and says, okay, um, maybe by default, you're gonna be connected to the terminal, but as soon as you run a command with some of these special options, like this, these redirections, all it's really doing is saying, well, we're gonna set up this table a little bit differently. We're going to open up the files that you need in whatever mode that you need them to be open in, reading or writing, and uh, overwrite what your standard input is, right? So when we input, when we use input redirection, we're saying, hey, use this input uh, as the standard input, uh, which is gonna be connected to a file that you can read from, right? With output redirection, we're overwriting our standard output entry in this processes file descriptor table and saying, hey, write to this file instead of the terminal. So these are the concepts of input and output redirection. And there's one more thing I want to demonstrate, which is standard error. And to do this, we're going to need to run a program in a way that gives us an error, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna reset my drawing here back to our defaults. And we're going to try and cat uh, using a file, uh, a file as an argument to cat like we normally would, right? So uh, let me just reset this really quickly, t0, t0. So we read into standard input, uh, we write from standard output. Okay, so what happens if we try and cat a file that doesn't exist, right? So normally the way that we use the cat program is we say cat followed by a file that does exist, such as input.txt, right? And we can give cat multiple files, right? So we can actually cat input.txt and output.txt. Let me hide this. And notice that it's gonna read from both files. And because we just copied one to the other, we get the same output twice, right? So what happens when we cat a file that doesn't exist, like foo.txt? We get an error message that says there's no such file or directory printed to our screen, right? And just for a quick demonstration, if we were to cat input.txt and then foo.txt, notice we get the output of, or we get the contents of input.txt printed to our screen line by line. And then we see this error message, no such file or directory, right? So, it turns out that this error message is printed to standard error, right? And why would there be any value in that? Well, what I wanna do next is try redirecting the output of this process to output to.txt, right? I'm not being very clever here. And notice that we don't see any of the output from input.txt, even though that was our first argument still. But we do still see this error message, right? We do still see that error message. And if I were to open up output 2.txt, notice that we get the lines that we expected from cat, but we don't have an error message here. Okay, there's no error message that was uh, redirected into output 2.txt. So how do we make sense of this? Well, this is a pretty perplexing behavior 
until we recognize that it all just has to do with these, this, uh, these standard inputs and output streams, and specifically in this case, standard air. Right? So when we give a command such as cat foo.txt uh, redirect to foo copy.txt, notice that we, we still see this error message printed to our screen. And because there, uh, if we were to look in this foo copy file, which we opened up for writing, expecting there to be data that we would, we would append to do it, uh, we would see that there's nothing in it. It's empty. Right? So the error message didn't propagate through. Right, so I'm going to run this one more time and talk about, well, why is it we still saw this error message here? And I think you can probably figure it out at this point, uh, but let's think about it. So uh, when we ran this, what we're saying is redirect output, standard output to foo copy, right? So standard output was going to, uh, I'm, I'm just going to reuse F0 here rather than going to the trouble of adding a new entry. Uh, standard output is going to write to this file, right? But we have an error in our program. And the cat program, by convention and, and out of good practice, didn't give its error messages to standard output. It sent its error messages to standard error. And this caused that error message to be written to our terminal because it was still hooked up to the terminal uh, by default. So now we have this question is, well, how, could we redirect standard error in the way that we can redirect standard output? Right? So let's try that next. And the syntax that we're going to see here is going to be, it's going to look like uh, output redirection. So we can do error.txt. But we need a way of specifying which file descriptor we're actually trying to redirect here. So by default, there's an implicit one in front of this uh, redirection that would say we're redirecting standard output. That's usually what you want to redirect. But there's nothing that stops us from redirecting file descriptor two which is always going to be standard error to error.txt. So let's try this out and see if it works. This time around, I'm going to say cat foo.txt, and then we're going to say redirect file descriptor two, which we know is standard errors file descriptor to the file error.txt. Notice we don't see any output to our terminal. And if I were to open error.txt, we would see that error message that was previously being sent to our terminal because that was what it was connected to before. Right? So if we try and imagine really quickly, how did these, how did this come together? Let me reset this drawing so that uh, standard output is going to terminal zero, uh, which is what we're connected to. And then what we did was we said redirect file descriptor two in the cat process. So that's standard error to write to file zero instead, and our file name was error.txt. I'm just gonna reuse uh, file descriptor zero. Uh, this should have been, I can rewrite it, error.txt, right? And so now when we run this command with redirecting the standard error to error.txt, it's gonna go to that particular file. So you might be wondering, well, can we redirect both standard output and standard error and convince ourselves that we could, we could do something like that? Sure, let's let's try it out. So I'm going to once again hide this and cat uh, input.txt and foo.txt. Notice when we do this, we're seeing both standard input first and standard error printed just after that. If I had done, you know, cat foo.txt is the first argument here. Notice we're seeing that error above. So it's reading these files in the order that we give it. And when there are errors, such as a file not existing, it's printing those to standard error and the other to standard input, right? So if we run this and we redirect standard error to um, copy.txt and we redirect standard, sorry, we redirect standard output to copy.txt and standard error to uh, error.txt what we'll see is no output printed to our screen, right? We didn't see any of the output or the errors, but if I were to open up copy.txt, sure enough, we've copied the, the one file's contents that did actually exist to here, or we more specifically, we copied the uh, standard output of the cat program, which was reading from 
input.txt. And if we open error.txt, we should see two errors this time around because we attempted to uh, access foo twice, and we do. And so just to bring this drawing home, uh, we connected, we did connect standard error to the uh, error.txt file. And we also connected standard output to a different file. And so here I actually do need to make an extra entry on my file, my operating system uh, file table, call it F2. And this would also be for writing. And this was to copy.txt, right? And this is what allowed us to write out to disk. And when we ran our command in this way, in terms of the cat process, when it said, hey, I wanna to write to standard output, the shell set up this process such that that standard output would be passed to or redirected to uh, this copy.txt file. And the errors would be redirected to error.txt. Right? In the next video, we're gonna look at pipes, which also have to do with this exact concept, uh, but give us a clever way of connecting two programs to one another.